So here's here's the uh, here's a uh, explanation of what goes on on our beach um, throughout the year. So you'll notice this is relative numbers of animals on the beach. Okay. So we always have animals here. It just depends upon the time of year as to what um, segment of the population is here. And right now we're in the fall haul out, and it's only juveniles. Okay. So uh, basically, I what I say is like. The, this is their, their time to rest on the beach without getting beaten up by the, by the adults. Uh, it's also their chance to practice being on the beach. And by that I mean, there are two of the major things they need to be able to do as adults is fast, because they're here for a month and they don't eat. They may go into the water if they get too hot or in the case of the juvenile males, they wanna go out and fight somebody out in the out here in these rocks at lower tide is sort of a little pool out there. You'll often see the males out there pushing each other around. Um, and, and to move around on the sand. Uh, you know, um, the, the head scientist up at UC Santa Cruz, he coined the term galumping uh, to describe their movement on the sand like a, like a worm or a snake. I prefer the much more scientific term of fosigillating which is another great biology term, which means almost nothing. Uh, Fosigillating means moving like a seal, because the, the scientific name for the family of seals is a phocids. So fosigillating means moving like a seal. Anyhow, so, but, that, but it's obviously very different environment uh, from the ocean, right? They're, they're very hydrodynamic. They, they're, they swim very well, but on the beach, they don't have, they have very short front flippers, you can see this one. You can see you, you might be you might be jealous of his fingernails if you look real carefully down there. Um, we've for a while we found a couple that had black and white stripes on their on their fingernails and we couldn't figure out who the manicurist was. Uh, but usually usually they're usually they're dark colored, um, and so they'll be here for about they'll be here for about a month, and um, they're basically just hanging out. Oh, you can see the one here that's scratching himself. You can see there's a wound there on the side. We, we've, we're, we've been seeing some, some, some substantial wounds. It's amazing how, how adept they are at getting away and surviving. Um, yeah. That, I think, is a male. I didn't show you here. So this is how you tell males from females. So, so uh, for the adults, you can tell the males from the females because the adults grow the long uh, proboscis, the long nose. It's not like an elephant, so they can't control it. It just flops around. Um, so the adults, it's easy. With the, the juveniles, they have to roll over on their back or if you see them fighting, the, the, um, the males will fight going uh, basically chest to chest. They're pushing each other around with their chest. Females never do that. They'll, they'll go side to side and squawk at each other. Um, so, uh, and that's a female. Uh, so th they both have a belly button, but the males have an extra hole in their tummy. And if you look real carefully, you can actually see where the nipples are but you'll notice that the nipples are inverted because they're hydrodynamic. They want to be able to swim through the ocean without anything sticking out in the way. So, so, uh, so that's how you can tell the juveniles uh, uh, genders apart. So the males have two holes on Right, they both have a belly button and the males have an extra hole. Okay. Well, they, they, I, think, I think that's a male. Yeah. Now we also have, you can see this one with his head leaning on the other. Looks like it's got some pock marks in the back. One of the predators for, this, for, for our elephant seals are small sharks. Oh, there's, those are two males going to each other. Are a, um, there's a small shark. I got a picture here, hang on. So this is called a cookie cutter shark. Okay, they're only like 17 inches long, and you can see they got a great set of teeth. 
And so they'll swim up and, and uh, they'll take uh, chunks of blubber out. And recently they were in Hawaii, they were having an inter island swim, crazy people swimming from one Hawaiian island to another, and they were bitten by the, by the cookie cutter shark. But that's, that's pretty unusual. Um, we we haven't seen we 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 don't know, okay. But that once again they're going to swim all the way up to the Gulf of Alaska to feed, okay. So uh, the the other thing that I find hysterical is, of course, this beach has gotten very uh, very reduced. But even when we had a large beach here, you'd usually see a pile of elephant seal, uh, elephant seals. It's like that's not how I would lay on the beach. I don't want to have all these elephant seals on top of it. Um, so the question is why? They live in 50, 40 degree water all by themselves. They don't have a problem. This, you think this is warm for them? In the sun, you don't think, you don't think it's, it's a nice treat? I don't think they like to be that high. So I'll give you another biology term that once again means almost nothing. Thigmotaxis. Thigmo means uh, touch, and taxis is like the desire to be touched. Um, but that doesn't explain why they're doing it. And I, I read, uh, found a, a better explanation. So you think about their environment when they're in the ocean, right? You've all been floating, right? You're supported. You're, uh, in their case, they're nice and round. Uh, think about what these animals are like when they, when they lay on the beach. You got gravity pushing down and sort of squishing your chest, reducing your thoracic cavity. So what happens if you've got another animal laying right next to you? It's going to support you, support you a little bit. It makes it makes you makes it makes you have a little rounder um, profile. The other thing is is that when these when these animals are at sea, they spend 90% of their time underwater. So underwater is as you know if you guys rightly said, yeah well there's there's a lot of there's pressure there. So they're used to feeling pressure, right? Just like, uh, uh, so having other weight on them might be very comforting, like if you ever get a, one of those, what, gravity vests for your dog or something. So, so I, I think that, that, that makes a lot more sense than just saying, oh, it's thingmotaxis. I mean, it's like, it doesn't explain anything. Um, so is, um, is that like nose proboscis? Is that something that they're born with as a male or is that something that No, oh no, here, here. So this is a, the male. You can't tell males from females until about age five. And about age five, they start to grow a nose, okay? And then you can see, basically, they grow, t basically two things change. They get this nose, and then the skin on their chest thickens, and we call that a chest shield, okay? And we can tell the age of the males uh, up until about age nine, this chest shield then actually extends all the way up past their eye, okay? And that, that turns out to be very handy for them when they are fighting. Oh great, I'm gonna need a new book here. So here's a, here's a, a male, this is a classic uh, calling uh, posture, but you can see, you can, you can see the, the thickening. And that'll be two inches thick, impregnated with uh, keratin like your hair and your fingernails. And so that, that helps them out when, they, when they're fighting because they go chest to chest and they'll bite each other. One of the things I find fascinating is how do they avoid biting their own nose? Look at the nose, it's, it's hanging down in, in front of their teeth. Is there a reason that their noses are, that they protrude so much? Is it like, uh, 